What is happening guys, I'm TechSource. Welcome back to Setup Wars episode 317. I thought I'd shoot this video sitting down for once just to see how I feel, but I got another jam-packed episode for you guys. So sit back and relax and let the Setup Wars begin. Are you still single and lonely? Does your crush not give you the attention that you deserve? Well, with today's sponsor, you'll still be single and lonely, but at least you'll get the respect that you deserve, goddammit. With established titles, you're allowed to buy one square foot of land in historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They send you this pretty cool frame certificate that identifies your plot of land and makes everything official. Believe it or not, you can officially include the name Lord or Lady on your credit card, your plane ticket, or even your dating profile. It's actually pretty awesome. But you know what the cool thing is about all this is that they actually plant one tree for every order in the effort to support global reforestation. So it's for a good cause. You're actually helping protect the beautiful Scottish woodlands by becoming a lord or a lady. Now the first 200 people that purchase a title pack using my link below will be effectively next to my plot. We're talking about a few minutes of walking distance here. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our little tech source kingdom. It makes such an amazing last minute gift, especially with the holidays coming up and just my subscribers are doing a massive Black Friday sale right now. If you use the code TechSource, you'll get an additional 10% off if you visit establishedtitles.com slash TechSource or just click my link below. Let's give a warm welcome to Andreas because this is his third submission for Setup Wars. I'm sure most of us remember his super clean H1 gaming setup from episode 264 and the more recent T-Monitor layout from episode 305. Well, he's back again with a completely revamped setup in the hopes of taking home the seal. For those who forgot, Andreas is a controller from Germany who built the setup originally for gaming and working from home. And just within a year, he's already upgraded it twice. The big difference is that he painted his wall black, so now it gives this immense contrast against the entire setup and he also rearranged his nano leaf lines. If I'm being honest, I much prefer the previous design. It was a nicer design and it was centered with your desk. The random lines on the right side with the cables connecting them to each other just doesn't do it for me unfortunately. And now he has this empty space above the monitors instead. He did get rid of his 27 inch and picked up another ultra ride. So now he's stacking two 34 inch displays on a new desk. The last desk he owned had a hole in the middle for his Elgato Stream Deck. Well, he made the same exact cutout on the right side and moved his PC over to the left side on the IKEA shelf. We still got the same peripherals, however, it looks like the color from the mouse pad stitching is starting to come off. Let me send you a fresh TS black topo mouse pad to upgrade your current one. If you're interested, hit me up on Discord. Looks like he dished his Go XLR, but he's still using the same microphone. So I gotta ask, what do you have your mic plugged in now since you don't have an audio interface anymore? I also noticed that the sound bar is now being blocked off by the bottom ultra right, so it's not in the most ideal location. I would have personally lifted up the bottom ultra right just a few inches just so your sound bar is not being blocked off. Other than that, the cable management is still impeccable as last time. Even though he's still using a sit and stand desk, it didn't stop him from hiding the cables. The PC power in the setup is still mostly the same, except he upgraded his 3060 Ti into an RTX 3080 Founders Edition. For the most part, I do like the way he decorated the entire room. I mean, the not only lines are an exception, but everything else in the room looks so much nicer and organized. I love the symmetry from the IKEA Calyx shelves, the custom RGB lit hexagon panels from last time, and even the new pegboards he added above his heater. Very nice work overall. With that said, there were still some questionable choices that were made, and I'm still not seeing that unique factor, if I'm being honest. But nonetheless, still a very badass and much improved set up over last time. Thank you, Andreas, for coming back on the show. Up next is Christian from Las Vegas, who's a level designer for 2K Sports. Believe it or not, this is actually his very first setup that he built after watching Setup Wars for quite some time. He decided to save up for two months and put it all together. Not bad for someone's first setup. There's always a huge learning curve when building your setup for the first time. There's a lot of trial and error that goes into creating a setup that works for you. So that's why it makes me so happy that you did all this just from watching Setup Wars. Looks like he decided to go with dual 27 inch MSI monitors side by side that he mounted to the IKEA Carl Blue countertop and he added a riser underneath to add some extra storage space for his laptop and other gear. 
For peripherals, he did go wireless with the Logitech MX keys and Master 3 combo with a very nice TechSource Desert mouse pad. Thank you for the support, by the way. However, I would eventually pick up a gaming mouse if you're really into gaming. The input lag from the Master 3 isn't exactly ideal for gaming. Moving on to audio, the primary source are the Razer normal speakers, but for gaming, he swaps to the Corsair Virtuosos that he keeps underneath the desk. Very good job with the cable management considering this was your first attempt at building a setup. I can see that you picked up a nice big rack to hold all the wires and even used a few cable clips to help out. Very nice. I'm digging the warm tones of this setup. The wooden accents combined with the warm lighting just makes my insides feel good. We even got the wood version of the Natalie panels on the wall. Powering everything is a custom build featuring the 12th gen i5 and an RTX 3080, which is also his first ever gaming PC. Everything about this setup just seems so well thought out and executed. I'm happy to hear that Setup Wars was the inspiration behind this. Thank you, Christian, for sharing this with us. Up next, we have a pretty badass dual setup by someone who goes by the name of Give Him Chills. All we know is that he's a software developer and a tech content creator from Colorado who built the setup for gaming and content creation. We got a massive U-shaped desk layout that consists of four Linman tabletops that he skinned in marble to give it a unique look. The main setup has an interesting monitor layout. So we got a 34 inch ultra wide that's mounted against the wall and then a secondary 27 inch in vertical mode that's kind of tilted upwards. I get why he did it this way though. It's to make space for both of his speakers and his boom arm that's holding the microphone. And because the monitor is practically touching the tabletop, he's able to hide the mount behind it so easily. This is actually a very nice alternate layout as opposed to sticking both monitors together because at least this way, you don't have an awkward speaker placement because you have that extra gap between both monitors. Moving on to peripherals, we got an extremely clean Gamma Key LK67 build that's paired with the SteelSeries Aerox 3 Ghost mouse. Aside from the speakers, he does own a pair of Bose QC35s for on-the-go listening, but his go-tos for gaming are the Rokat ELO 7.1s that he keeps underneath the desk. Speaking of underneath the desk, my dude has not one, but two Godox RGB tubes just to add some lighting underneath here. I mean, these are not cheap, by the way. They go for $300 a pop. I mean, everything about this setup is lit. There is an immense amount of lighting in this room. I do want to talk about the wall on the left side real quick because I think it's really cool the way he customized it. So he added a white pegboard in the center, which helps keep his setup from getting cluttered, but then he filled up the extra space around it with those 3DR panels. And for lighting, he added some Gobi neon strips to add some separation and depth. I'm sure cable management was no easy task with this setup, considering there is so much gear, but he did a really great job routing all the cables through the raceways and into the back of the Alex unit where everything is plugged in. Powering the main setup is a gorgeous all white build inside the Be Quiet Silent Base 802, and it's packing the Ryzen 9 5900X with an RTX 3070 Vision from Gigabyte. Very nice choices for the build, by the way. The second setup also has two monitors, but it's powered by 17 inch Dell XPS instead. And if I'm being honest, it kind of looks cramped in the corner. I can't help but feel like the secondary setup didn't get as much love as the primary. But I do have to give Chills some credit for being so meticulous with the color scheme. I think skinning the tabletops was such a good idea to add a unique look, especially since we see so many IKEA countertops on the show. It's nice to spice it up a bit. I do have to admit though, the RGB might be a little too much for some people, but personally, I like it. I feel like it's balanced very nicely across the entire setup. Thank you Chills for sharing this awesome setup with us. All right, let's take a break from all the RGB and check out a cozy gaming setup that has none. Nick, who's only 19, is a small business owner from Texas that built this setup for streaming and managing his business. Right off the bat, we got a 32 inch Odyssey G3 as the main monitor and a 21 inch in vertical mode that's used for chat and some coding. They are both mounted to the Linman tabletop, but notice how the left side is being supported by a piece of the Alex unit. I'm not exactly against this as long as you have the tabletop secured somehow. For peripherals, Nick owns a Logitech G305 Lightspeed and two pairs of keyboards that he swaps between, the Velocifier TKL and a smaller 60% version. Whichever gear he's not using, he stores it on the pegboard against the wall. But I do wanna talk about the location of the speakers a little bit. I've actually mentioned this on the last setup, but if you somehow create space between both displays, you can squeeze a second speaker in the middle. But since the speakers are so tiny, you could just bring over the left one and put it underneath the main monitor. I'm really curious why you have it tucked away on the left side. Other than that, the rest of the setup looks clean. All the drawers are nicely organized, 
with excellent cable management underneath the desk. My guy even has those raceways coming from the TV across the wall into the back of the PC. We have ourselves a budget build with a Ryzen 5 5600 and an RTX 5500 XT. A very clean and cozy non-RGB setup without a doubt. Thank you, Nick, for sharing this with us. Wrapping up the episode is no stranger to setup wars. In fact, I lost count at how many times Owen has entered the show. Regardless, he is back again to show off an awesome couple setup that he built for himself and his significant other. My first impression is looking at this new layout. It kind of reminds me of Britney's original setup back from episode 192. How she made that really cool custom U-shaped desk that just wrapped around there was really awesome. This has a similar layout, but just on a bigger scale. On one side is Amy's setup, and right behind hers is Owen's. Sandwiching in the middle is a tiny little workstation setup that is used to build custom keyboards, and I just love how the lighting helps create a separation between both sides. The massive U-shaped desk was all custom made out of MDF wood, and they added a ton of shelves to keep things organized while also helping decorate the setup at the same time. Amy's setup has a single 32-inch curved monitor with a custom Echo keyboard and a Logitech G305 mouse, while Owen's setup also has the same 32-inch curved monitor but with different peripherals. He's rocking an iQnix L80 and a Rocat Kane mouse. Even though the layout is somewhat similar on both sides, they each have their own style and personality, and that's what I like about this setup. We got a really nice high-end system powering Owen's setup. I think it's the same specs as last time, we got the Ryzen 9 3900X with an RTX 3070, while Amy's PC is more on the budget side with a Ryzen 5 3600X and a GTX 1660 Ti. Also, this is why I didn't get a white footrest for my setup, okay? It gets extremely dirty. I know a lot of you guys are asking me in the dream setup video, so I thought I'd actually show you the reason why. As much as I love being so dedicated to my color scheme, there are just certain items out there that you should avoid getting in white. A wrist rest, and a footrest, just to name a few. This is definitely one of my favorite couple setups I've seen on the show recently. Thank you again, Owen, for coming back on the show. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite, and for some weird reason, if you enjoyed me sitting down for once, let me know by tossing a like. I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love your faces, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. I guess one of the benefits of sitting on a chair is I can spin whenever I want. <laughs>